Hello dear chess friends, it's February 2021 and by now uh, the prodigy from Iran originally, currently representing the World Chess Federation, Ali Reza Firuzja, has already established his position among the chess elite. Uh, he's rated 2700 in classical chess, he's also exceptionally strong in both rapid and blitz, uh, and also in the internet chess, uh, which he demonstrated on so many occasions already, and uh, by now it's not even surprising when he displays uh, chess masterpieces over the board. Let's take a look at one he created just before entering 2700 uh, club. Uh, this was a game, I'm going to show you a game he played uh, in Sharjah Masters 2019 uh, against a uh, slightly lower, lower rated player um, in his standards, so uh, 20, um, 2187 Mila Zarkovic and Firuzja at this point was 26.57. Uh, so let's take a look how uh, the game went. E4, C5, we have the Sicilian, Knight F3, D6, and of course, um, at this point, normally people go D4, and this leads to Nidorf, Dragon variations, uh, also Black can choose some other um, some other possibilities to go for the classical Sicilian. Uh, generally speaking, a couple of options, uh, which are the most classical ones, uh, can be displayed. Instead, Firuzja went for knight c3, not showing his intentions as regards the opening. a6, so clearly black is prepared for the knight -earth. If d4, then after the exchange of the pawns in the center, um, Black is going to play knight f6, and that transposes to the vari to the knight of variation. Instead, Firuzja went with g3, and this is why I like this game so much because, um, well, he plays um, a variation I play myself. I've been playing myself with um, quite nice success, and he actually showed me one idea I didn't know about, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. So stay with me. Uh, b5, d4. So only now does Firuzja play. Uh, d4, I think, is just a way to outfox the opponent uh, at the very beginning of the game. Um, he could have chosen another uh, move order, but this one is perfectly understandable. So, uh, knight takes d4 after the exchange of the pawns, bishop b7, logically one goes bishop g2. Here, knight f6, uh, developing another piece, and kingside castle. All of this is very logical, we are still uh, in the theory, and here black played e6. In many instances, in such positions, uh, white should at least consider black playing b4, especially that the knight on c3 is a crucial piece as regards the protection of the pawn e4. So here, in this case, uh, b4 is not that dangerous because white has this beautiful d5 square for the knight, and believe me or not, white uh, obtains the advantage. So if you're playing this position from black's perspective, it is really important to, for you to understand that e6 is really essential for black not to have a worse position. Uh, and here Firuzja went in the standard way, rook e1. This is a very important move, and in fact it already prepares um, quite a few tactical tricks. So generally speaking bishop e7 is not advisable, may not be advisable due to e5 break and then that unleashes the beast standing on g2, the bishop on g2 uh, enters with great force but also the pawn uh, on e5 would attack the knight on f6 so that's uh, really dangerous. We can actually take a look at a couple of interesting continuations from here although this is strictly, this is supposed to be strictly an attacking video so I'm going to really briefly show you what I have in mind. So in case black went bishop e7, there is e5, if bishop takes g2, e takes f6 is an intermezzo, so an in-between move, and that gives white an, a material advantage. Uh, immediately, basically, two bishops are attacked at the same time, uh, the one here and the one on e7, so black is just going to lose material and likely the game. If instead black opted for d takes e5, then obviously we just take on b7, and, um, well, at the end of the day, white should have the material advantage. Uh, the game could still, of course, continue, and uh, some technique will still be required, but uh, this is one of the typical 
concepts that uh, exist in such positions and also uh, if black chose to go b4 in this position then i wouldn't really be surprised i'm pretty sure this actually works um knight d5 so this is a common sicilian knight sacrifice and in case black takes not believing that white has enough compensation or uh, in fact that white has a legitimate attack um, and here as you see white is down a piece for a pawn but at the same time he gives this powerful check and in case bishop e7 is played the knight f5 enters with great force and it turns out that black is pretty much doomed he could still of course play a very passive move like knight g8 but that shows how problematic uh, black's position is i believe there there's a, at least a couple of strong continuations for white here uh, queen d4, queen g4, maybe even just collecting the pawn on g7, uh, capitalizing on the great knight's position. And black is really in grave danger because uh, his king, king is still in the center and black's development just looks pretty much ridiculous. So this is definitely not the continuation black should be uh, excited about. And um, I imagine that this is the reason why uh, black deviated from all of this and played knight f to d7, which might uh, look like a strange move, but again, once you get this position over the board and you realize that there are um, quite big problems, tactical issues you have to consider at every move, then um, playing a move like knight f to d7 might actually be the only way for you to, well, save yourself. So, um, this is this has been played on a couple of occasions uh, it's not a move which is new to the theory of the opening and let's see how Firuzja dealt with this position because this is really uh, a wonderful display a model way of dealing with um, position like that so he played a4 already challenging black's pawn structure on the queen side this is an idea that um, is really important in uh, this opening so basically there are two concepts here uh, if black goes before then uh, one idea is again to go knight d5 and the sacrifice might actually just work once more but the alternative is that white can also go knight a2 and it looks like uh, the white's knight is um, driven back that it's passive but it's actually it's actually going to be involved in the game in just a second so if black goes a5 to safeguard the pawn before then white can either go c3 uh, bringing the knight back to play or actually he can also go knight b5 so the b5 square ten turns out to be an outpost and uh, now the knight can attack the pawn d6 the bishop can also be introduced in the game and generally speaking white should have a nice initiative so this is one of the concepts uh, knight d5 is also probably um a nice way to to present black with some serious questions uh with respect to his opening or her opening in, in this instance uh, so uh zarkovich went b takes a4 which looks pretty normal right so um black just captures the pawn so that uh, later on the development of the minor pieces uh can be just uh, continued so there was rook takes a4 again it's quite a unique situation that uh, one of the players develops the rook so early uh, in the opening especially in the sicilian and especially with white along the uh, a file on the other hand the rook will be used in a, in a fantastic way in a moment so let's take a look at that so there was bishop e7 uh, logically black needs to well, do something about the king and in a moment casting will be the move and here Firuzja, uh, I'm not sure if he already knew that or whether he calculated this but the move sequence you're about to witness uh, it's one of the best ones I've seen in in Sicilian in um, in most recent years I've been aware of this idea but not exactly in this position and I didn't realize how strong this is until I actually checked this game of computer and it turned out turned out that uh, Ali Reza just uh, well he just played objectively the strongest moves move after move after move so rook b4 this is this magical move I'm talking about 
uh, it might look like just an attempt to win the bishop and harmless one, right? Because after all, uh, after rook b4, black can just protect the bishop. That's true. But still, white sacrifices the rook and tries to prove that black's peace coordination is uh, just horrible and white's pieces enter the game with great force. And this is exactly what happened. So after the exchange, uh, Firuja opens the position immediately and it is very dangerous, not only because the knight on b7 is currently under attack, uh, so the bishop enters the game from the distance, but also let's keep in mind that the black king is still in the center of the board, so if the position gets open, uh, then black may actually be have uh, be, uh, may actually have quite serious problems with his uh, or her uh, king safety. So after e5, d5 was played. Of course, black should try to close the position, but trying is not enough. If you face the ferocious attack of Ali Reza Firuja, knight takes d5 crashing through the defense of blacks um, and it's really going to be a total mess in a moment so currently this is a legitimate rook sacrifice earlier on Firuja sacrificed an exchange right now he sacrifices the piece and even though he does that um, his position is completely winning because when you consider attack and defense it's actually about um, evaluating and assessing the position by considering the pieces that are actively involved in the attack and in defense. So right now, white has a magnificent knight on d4, a very powerful bishop, rook uh, already involved despite being on e1 because it's a long range piece. And at the same time, black has really miserable rooks on in the corners of the board. Knights also do not seem to be interested in the game. Uh, so even though white is uh, white has a serious material deficit. Uh, it's not really, uh, it's not really an important factor. So Firuzja develops his initiative. Knight f5, threatening the pawn, threatening another pawn in the center, and also pref um, preparing e6 break in a moment. So after knight f5, kingside castle was played, and it looks like, well, black should be all right, right? Black should be on time to protect everything. No, not quite. Let's uh, see what happens. Bishop takes d5. So white slowly, uh, slowly um, gets the material back, but it's not as important as actually improving the bishop. Have a look. It's attacking in both directions at the same time, so it can be used for uh, just collecting the knight if allowed, or just to um, create an even more dangerous attack on the king. So after bishop takes d5, black played bishop c5, uh, attempting to sort of bribe white. So Zarkovic is saying, feel free to take my knight. If you do that, I'm going to exchange the queens. And since I still have the material advantage, I'm going to go for this end game quite confidently. And Ali Reza is not really interested in that. Instead, he just goes for a wild attack. B4 first. This is quite a precise move. Um, a beautiful one. Queen G4 would also uh, be enough to maintain the advantage. But B4 really shows uh, the precision in the attack. So like a Swiss watch, Firuzja um, counts the time till, till the end of the game actually. So b4 came, attacking the bishop. If black decides to take on b4, we can actually put that on the board. It transpires that after queen g4, there is a double attack. And that's a move which is easy to miss. Well, queen g4 is not uh, easy to miss, itse to miss itself, uh, the move itself. But um, in conjunction with the attack on b4, it can be quite tricky. So b4 is very strong. Um, black went bishop b6, and only now queen g4 came. The difference is that uh, right now the bishop is not really protecting um, this a3 f8 diagonal, so in particular e7 square. In a moment you're going to see what I have in mind. So black went g6 because of course, uh, well, checkmate was threatened, perhaps I should have mentioned that. Uh, so g6 um, and now again, even though Firuzja is down a rook, uh, all of his pieces are perfectly involved in the attack. So again, it's not about the number of the pieces you have. 
uh, on the board. You can be down a rook, but if all of your pieces are involved, if they're engaged in the attack, if all of your friends are invited to the party, then the party is going to be huge. And Firuja plays e6, uh, just totally destroying Black's uh, defensive uh, structure. And uh, now, well, capturing on e6 is going to be a disaster because one uh, bishop already is going to give a check, the other is going to enter the game with decisive attack. I'm sure you can calculate all of this. Uh, for those of you who can't, uh, let me put that on the board. King h8, bishop b2, you don't survive an attack like that. It's just going to be a matter of time. You can still prolong the game, but um, I just don't believe black is going to survive that. So, e6, uh, queen f6 was played, and here there is at least a few moves that win. Uh, Alireza chose e7, which is converting the pawn into a, uh, an actually quite a huge asset. It can become a queen in a moment. So uh, black needs to split his defense, her defense, sorry, uh, after rook e8, and here came the final punch. Bishop takes f7, and it turns out that if queen takes f7, uh, white wins the queen after the fork, and if instead king takes f7, then queen c4, an unexpected resource, um, black is deprived of escape squares for the king, so queen e6 is the only move, but now queen takes e6 comes, comes with checkmate. And this is quite a picturesque position. Uh, if you look at it just before uh, the resignation, all of these pieces are not involved in the game. They are uh, just uh, waiting in the corner of the board, patiently waiting for the next game to start. And instead, Alireza Firuzja um, really involved all of his pieces in the in the attack. He had less of those, but he knew how to use them. In fact, even though the bishop on c1 is on its initial um, position, it was still involved. When we calculated uh, variations, uh, it was actually an active piece. It could be used at any moment, and black had to consider that. So uh, the trick with the bishops, and actually with the rooks as well, is that uh, sometimes they can be placed on even on the back rank and still be actively involved in the game. This is uh, the essence of the bishops. They are long range pieces. So what you need to make sure uh, when you attack, what you need to to uh, to remember when you attack is that you need to look for active uh, positions for the bishops and that logically means uh, that uh, diagonals need to be open for the bishops for them to be used and attack from the distance. I hope you enjoyed this game as much as I do. I did. Uh, I really fell in love with it uh, from the first time I, I saw it and I couldn't believe my eyes uh, that the sacrifice of the rook earlier on in the opening, sacrificing the, uh, the rook for this bishop on b7 turned out to be so powerful and I just can't wait to use uh, such an idea or a similar one in one of my games. Thank you.